Congressman uh, Lloyd Doggett, who represents parts of San Antonio as well as up to Austin. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us. First of all, what happened today from where you are and what can you tell us about what's going on there right now? Well, it's just a shocking and tragic day for America. Uh, not since uh, the War of 1812 has the Capitol been breached. Uh, we've had uh, violent protesters uh, called to Washington by President Trump, uh, who stormed the Capitol, attacked our police. There's been a shooting within the Capitol. I can look uh, just over my shoulder and see uh, the uh, folks out there on behalf of the president who he's still not called off, see more and more police being called out. We could see tear gas earlier. Uh, it is uh, just the natural result of the president feeding a diet of lies day after day to his supporters. And today, even condemning his vice president, I don't think there's anyone who's been more loyal to him, condemning him for following his constitutional duty. Uh, we have to turn this around and I hope uh, that this is one of those situations where having hit rock bottom, uh, more Americans are out there saying, we've got to find a way to work together and move forward and we have to reject the hate and uh, encouragement of violence and sedition as far as I'm concerned that this president is responsible for. Congressman, can you walk me through what happened, how it unfolded, where were you when everything started to yes. play out? Because of the pandemic, we are, of course, as you are, all masked. And uh, we've been asked to permit only uh, 11 members from each side to be in the House chamber at any one time. So as uh, this protest began to grow, I'm right across the street. You can see the Capitol across uh, behind me. Uh, and we began to see protesters uh, gathering more and more. A few police, not nearly enough. Uh, the tear gas rise. They were able to breach the area, uh, continuing to get uh, alarms here. Uh, my residence, which is just uh, a few blocks from the Capitol, that entire block was uh, evacuated outside of the Capitol complex. Uh, and then these reports coming in of a woman having been shot in the Capitol and seeing uh, the photos of uh, the very doors that I walked through to cast my vote on behalf of the people of San Antonio the windows in those broken and people trying to storm into the Capitol chamber. What do you uh, want to see or expect to see happen right now? I talked with uh, one of your colleagues here, Joaquin Castro, I said there's been a little tough communi to communicate between uh, Congress members uh, about what will happen next. And there was a concern about whether there should be uh, the National Guard called in, the Department of Defense didn't want that to happen. What would you like to see happen there right well, now? My, I think that clearly uh, our law enforcement was understaffed for this job. Uh, and my understanding is that the uh, Washington DC National Guard is being called in. Uh, yes, communication is limited between uh, members and offices here. Uh, everyone asked to be locked in their office. Some offices having been evacuated earlier uh, because of security threats uh, and uh, I, what I want to see is democracy go on. We cannot let Trump and, and his uh, violent supporters win this. Uh, ultimately, we will overcome them, and we need to complete the job of recognizing this vote, the victory of uh, President-elect Biden, uh, and hopefully uh, with his approach, he can start to heal the, the deep wound that has happened here, uh, something that has never happened in American history, even in the Civil War to see this Capitol stormed and breached and violence occur within it. Congressman, if I may, I just wanted to touch on the enormity of the moment. I mean, casting electoral votes is usually a mundane process. It's usually not even noteworthy on any level. And, and now what we've seen is so unprecedented. And I just wanted to get your, your feel for this moment. Well, Simone, you're so right. Uh, normally, members would not even attend this session because it's such a routine ministerial event. But understand what the folks that are supporting the president have tried to do. They basically want to throw out the entire vote of all the people of Arizona, of Georgia, and Michigan, or Pennsylvania, I don't know how many states, but to say that their votes don't count to say that millions of Americans who participated in good faith in this democracy, often with Republican officials counting the votes, that none of that matters. 
without showing the slightest evidence of fraud or wrongdoing after one court after another, including courts with Trump appointed judges have thrown out their cases. And even then this president comes forward, encourages them, encourages these protesters and condemns his own vice president for fulfilling his constitutional duty. So far, it's just, it's just unheard of. So far right now, we have heard from President-elect Joe Biden, not yet President Trump, as we are talking right now, that may change in the afternoon. Now, the House Minority Leader and Chip Roy here, Republicans have condemned this and said that, uh, you know, there should be a re restoration of order there. What, uh, what would you like to see happen from the president? And do your colleagues in uh, the Republican Party there have any influence with the president if they've talked to him directly and he hasn't yet spoken about this? Well, you know, this president's never uh, uh, short of tweets, uh, but the only tweets he's had out, he called for peaceful protest after the Capitol had been breached. He could condemn this. He could call his, uh, his dogs off the Capitol uh, and, uh, and apologize for having ever asked them to come to Washington in the first place. At the moment, my main concern is let's get sufficient law enforcement here at the Capitol to check through the Capitol, make sure that there are no... Uh, explosive devices or other dangers lurking there. And then let's go back to our work tonight, into tomorrow, whatever it takes to see that this official vote count is counted, despite President Trump, that it's counted and that we move forward in two weeks to having a humane president who wants to heal America and bring us back together. Congressman, uh, just speaking to the nature of our democracy, the state it's in at this moment, uh, President-elect Joe Biden said this is a small group of extremists. He says it's not dissent, it's disorder and it's it must end. And, and I'm wondering, as you're reflecting on what's taken place today with the protesters, do you feel that way too, that this was an isolated small group of people or do you feel that the sentiment here is much larger and much deeper across the country? Sadly, I'm afraid it's much larger and deeper. Uh, and when you find such a strong percentage of Republican voters thinking that Trump won an election, uh, you realize uh, that how, how dependent they have become on him as the source of information. And unfortunately, all they're getting are lies. You know, through the years, I have seen just dozens of protests around this Capitol. I participated in some of them myself. I believe in the right of people to come and peacefully protest for whatever their cause and would defend anyone who's pro-Trump for doing that. But to engage in these violent acts, to breach the Capitol, to endanger our law enforcement officers and other people peacefully assembled there to, in order to prevent the work of democracy from taking place. That's what President Trump wanted. He did not want today to happen. And when all else failed, he did not in any way try to discourage his protesters that he called here from disrupting and trying to essentially have a coup here uh, to replace democracy with autocracy. It's obviously very hard for you to predict what's going to happen next. But in terms of uh, in practical terms, when you were or they were there in the House chamber, we expected it to last for hours because of the objections. Where do you see right now the next in the process? And would you like it to go forward as soon as this is cleared out, say, tonight? Would you like it to see after order restored tomorrow? And what do you expect with the way things physically are there in Washington? Are you going to be there all yes. night in your office locked down? Uh, I think uh, we may well be here all night and expected that before these protests ever erupted. First and foremost, we have to rely on our law enforcement officers. They will have to check room by room through the Capitol to make sure that there is no danger lurking there. And then I would hope we would resume debate, let these uh, folks who want to speak for President Trump have their full say, uh, give them every opportunity to offer the evidence that they declined to provide to uh, 80 or so courts. Uh, and then let's move on with their next challenge and see what other state they want to deny an opportunity to be heard in this election complete our count, try to complete our count by tomorrow, by Friday at the latest, so that America has the certainty uh, that we don't have this afternoon, that we're not gonna be upended uh, by the president's violent uh, supporters, that democracy will prevail. And I believe it will, I'm hopeful it will, and I'm hopeful that Americans having seen how far this president and his supporters will go, that more people will turn around. And even if they did not support President Biden initially, will give him a fair chance to make a go and build back better for America. 
Uh, Congressman, as your constituents and viewers are watching this interview here in Texas, you know they're worried about your safety. They're worried about how you're doing. And so, can you just tell us on on that level, how are you? <laughs> Well, as you can tell, I'm alarmed. I'm sad about what has happened here today, uh, but I'm safe. I think we will be safe. I think we now have uh, a sufficient law enforcement here present now or coming here uh, to protect us. Uh, the damage is not about what happens to me personally or another colleague. It is about the damage that is long lasting that will take years to heal to our democracy. These images have gone out all around the world you can imagine that our adversaries in Russia and China and other places, they use this to show an America in chaos. This afternoon, Washington is in chaos, and we have to turn that around as soon as possible. A last quick question or two here. There had been some speculation before this happened that uh, there might be some attempt to, to trigger something that would uh, force the president to, or trigger the president to impose some kind of martial law or a lockdown that would, that would delay the process, at least, of certifying the election results. Do you think that could have happened here? And are you concerned that this could last longer um, to the point where there, there could be any delay in either the certification or the inauguration? Until Donald Trump is gone and Joe Biden is sworn in as our president, Americans have reason to be concerned. Uh, this president is clearly unhinged and separated from reality, as are the supporters that were here today. Uh, I don't know that uh, there's anyone left in his cabinet that can stand up to him when he condemns even his vice president. He seems to be isolated except for these fringe violent supporters. Uh, and so, yes, I, I remain concerned. I don't believe that our American military will follow an illegal order from this president uh, simply designed to uh, have a coup in his behalf. But I think we have to watch it moment by moment after what happened today.